Um, we're calling it Grassroots Strategies and Recommendations from Activists. And you have before you some <laughs> folks that have been working on single payer for decades people who have been starting coalitions within the first year, or this last year, and we're gonna have each of them address the specifics of, of what they've been doing, what's worked, what's been challenging, and recommendations for moving forward. So really good thoughts about um, our strategy building that we'll, we'll talk about more later. I wanna introduce the panel. Uh, starting from here, we have Makua Ray who is uh, the founder of the Coalition for Uninsured and Underinsured for Single Payer, a DC coalition. Um, he is based, uh, he's also a community organizer, as you know, a songwriter and musician. Uh, next to Makua, we have Alison Gutu, uh, who is an organizer with the National Women's Liberation, a grassroots feminist group fighting for national health care and other social wage programs. Allison also works with the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement and is a public interest lawyer. Then we have David Breitzman, who holds a BS in sociology and enjoys implementing new communication strategies for nonprofits. Nonviolence and compassion are often seen to have little practical utility. David does his part with the Private Health Insurance Must Go Coalition, Great Panthers, Riverside Church, and others to increase their everyday use. Then we have Sandy Fox, who is a board member and steering committee member of Healthcare Now. Um, she's also um, co-chair of the uh, Western PA Coalition for Single Payer. Uh, Rita Valenti, who joins us from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, she has been active with Healthcare Now Georgia. Uh, she's a practicing nurse and former state legislator. She founded Georgians for a Common Sense Health Plan, as well as Project South, uh, and she was also an organizer for the U.S. Social Forum in 2007. We have Mimi Senor, the Vice President and Legislative Chairperson for Missourians for Single Payer. As you know, uh, she was named 2002 Nurse of the Year and honored by the Missouri House of Representatives by resolution for her work on single payer. And Don Beckler, last but not least, has been a single payer activist since 1993 and chairs Single Payer Now, a statewide grassroots health reform advocacy group based in San Francisco and also serves as a board member for Healthcare Now. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic down the road. Each uh, panelist has three to five minutes to talk about concrete strategies and then we'll have some time for Q&A. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, all right. Uh, so I'm one of the people who have been organizing for a fairly short time uh, as it relates to single payer. Uh, in brief, I discovered about, I discovered single payer earlier this year uh, in a combination of ways, uh, listening to media as it started to gain more media attention in terms of healthcare reform and that issue. And uh, I was moved to get involved when I heard a radio report of a woman who had to choose between um, bankrupting her family or death. And I said, wow, this is a remarkable choice that we here in America are being forced to make as it concerns our health care. And I was honestly just blown away. And it was at that point that I recognized that we're dealing with a, a human rights issue. Uh, I've been a community organizer around other issues, prison issues, um, social justice issues and the like in Washington, D.C., as we know, is a, a hotbed for all issues, it seems. Um, and as an artist, I've often found a way to use my art to engage community. Um, so with that, as it relates to the coalition we founded earlier this year, uh, the coalition, as she mentioned, is called the Coalition of the Uninsured and Underinsured for Single Payer. Uh, in my discussions with uh, Jerry Tucker, uh, who's here at this conference as well. Uh, we talked about the need for the voice of the uninsured to be included in this uh, organizing. That we noticed that there had been a lot of other organizations, um, concerned groups dealing with labor and nurses and doctors, but we heard very little, if anything, from those who were actually being most affected. And that was the uh, impetus and the inspiration for um, bringing together this coalition based in Washington, D.C. One of the first um, things that we did 
was attempt to bring knowledge of single payer Medicare for all to the community because quite honestly I discovered that I'd mentioned, I think people mentioned this yesterday, but that um, not knowing the term single payer was an obstacle unto itself uh, in terms of grassroots organizing. People just simply don't know what it is. And uh, even the term Medicare for all is a foreign concept. I mean, of course, most people have heard of Medicare, but the idea of Medicare for all, they're like, well, doesn't that mean then, okay, so all seniors, you know? But no, I mean, really having to educate uh, and engage community around what these concepts mean was a very important first step. And uh, our first event took place on the Sunday prior to the Medicare's 44th birthday event in D.C. at a, a local park called uh, Malcolm X Park, also known as Meridian Hill Park. And one of the things that we initially did was begin to do outreach to other groups in the city that had been working on universal health care issues for a very long time, such as the Great Panthers and other local um, organizations. I mean, obviously, we, we also were active to reach out to Healthcare Now, uh, as well as PNHP, to get teaching materials. Because again, the first, step, the first step in doing the grassroots organizing I was finding was to be able to provide factual information to support the position that everybody deserves health coverage. And um, in addition to that, I found that outreach was obviously the next step. I mean, networking with organizations already involved is key, then outreach. Um, one of the, and, and particularly in DC and I think nationwide, um, church groups are very, very important. I mean, if we understand basic, the basic tenets of any religion, it's to care for the sick, to care for the poor, right? So that was an initial uh, focus for us, and we were, Happy to reach out to uh, Plymouth Congregational Church, uh, Reverend Grayland Hagler, who was amongst our speakers at our first event. He's been very active organizing in other areas of social justice, but uh, healthcare is obviously a concern for all people, but particularly church groups. I mean, I certainly recommend that in our mobilization around single payer and more visibility, we have to engage faith organizations. I mean, they have access to a lot of people who need healthcare. You know, and so they can also relate to, to um, you know, why that's important. Uh, other organizations, obviously, DC is home to many nonprofits, Hip Hop Caucus being amongst them. So they were part of our outreach. And also uh, students. And I mentioned this yesterday, recognizing that there was not as many people under 30 here as I think should be here. Uh, but that also has to do with our need to reach out beyond the generational line and really engage those under 30 because they have the strength and the intelligence and they're the inheritors of the work that we're doing here now. So we wanna get them as actively engaged as possible and increase visibility. This is all I can say is use the social media. This is what we were doing is using social media, the internet, uh, local radio stations, for example, WPFW 89.3 in Washington, D.C., uh, Pacifica Network has been very, very supportive. So there were a number of air shifters that were happy to announce our events and things like this and our teach-ins. And I'll just kind of close with that for now and we'll come back to questions later. Thank you.